Hey guys, Joey here with Turtle Labs. Welcome back to the shop. Today we have a dirt cheap drifter that's also very capable. Today, typically you see mostly brushless builds because they're generally better, but can a brush car drift too? Absolutely you can. 20 years ago when I built my first drift RC car based off of a team associated TC3, I used a brush motor and it was just fine. Does that still hold up today though? Well, let's find out. Make sure and stay till the end. I've got some footage of this thing drifting and uh, just see my thoughts on this build in general and also how much this thing cost me. Anyway, let's get to the build. Hey, hope you guys are enjoying the video so far. If you're curious about what we're building our rig on, this is one of our field benches. We actually make and sell these in our shop in the United States and they're fully customizable to fit your hobby needs. Links for more information are listed below. And while you're at it, uh, check out our website and see some of the other cool stuff that we make. Anyways, now that we got that out of the way, let's get back to work. All right, so can you drift with a brush motor today? Yeah, yeah, you can. Uh, if you're coming into this, into RC drifting from another discipline of RC, this is a great starter build just to get going. I'm not saying that this is a, a super good performer, but for the price, I mean, you can't really beat it. The ISDT EC70 ESC is super tunable, though it's a little quirky to set up compared to some of the other ones I've used, but it's so cheap, like, why not? Brush motors are just so cheap 
building your flavor of RC chassis with these parts will get you drifting with, without breaking the bank. Now, with that said, I would probably limit the use of a brush motor to a hard, smooth surface, and I would avoid carpet altogether. I think the carpet might bog it down too much. We built this Secure D5 chassis right out of the manual using their specified settings. So you can literally copy this exact setup uh, on your end just by using those settings. Uh, I think it could do, do a little bit better with some tweaking, but I wanted to keep it just like manual box stock just so that you can see how it performs without any tweaks. Overall, the D5 chassis is a really good platform to build on. And if people tell you that it's like a plastic piece of junk, they probably haven't owned one or they haven't driven a well set up one. Now it is a cheap kit. It's not a thousand dollar drift rig, but for the price, I mean, you really can't beat it. I recommend, even if you have a nice drift rig, just get one of these and play around with it. They're so cheap. If anything, you can take parts off of your other rigs and throw it on here when you're done with them and then have a second rig. Also, there's very great online support for these things. Uh, there's, there's a couple of Facebook groups dedicated to the D5 and they're really helpful on there. So. You really, you really can't go wrong with one of these. Anyways, for an ESC, we ended up going with an ISDT E70 brushed ESC, and we just set it to drift mode. We didn't do any tweaks, so it's real easy to just connect it to your phone, hit drift, and just run, and that's how you see it in this video. So you can see some of that footage here in a minute. Now, initially, we ended up going with a Tamiya Sport Tune motor, and I love those motors in a lot of, a lot of other cars, but it just, it just needed a little more wheel speed in this chassis. So we ended up going with a Hobby Park 12 turn motor and a 26 tooth pinion. And with that, it was plenty of wheel speed on our, uh, our polished concrete surface. For a servo, we chose the Trackstar TSD99X. I've got those things in a number of other rigs and I really like them and it's got plenty of speed. It also is really compatible with the Power HT G1 gyro that we use. Now, one thing that I would recommend not skimping on is the gyro. This is something that you can keep no matter what you do with the other stuff. You can upgrade everything else. But the gyro, if you go with a cheap one of those, you're really not going to have a good experience. Overall, I really like the way this thing drives. But with that said, I would much rather drive a brushless car. But for a starter or a second rig, this thing is great, man. The, the whole build costs $230. If you already have a battery, a radio, and a receiver, just pop it in here and uh, charge up a battery and you're ready to go. So now that you've heard me blabber on about this thing, Here's a little drifting footage around my shop just so you can see how it performs. Uh, it's just around a couple of tires. Eventually I'm gonna set up a, a cool drift track and I'm gonna have some videos on that too. So make sure and stay tuned for that. Um, anyway, uh, enjoy this footage and thanks for watching.